All right, glad you're joining us today for our What Do I Do series. Um, this is where we want to answer some important questions in a short amount of time. So the question we wanna deal with today is this. I'm a good person, so will that get me to heaven? If not, what do I do? What do I do? And the reason why this question is so important is because a lot of people actually believe that. And that kind of makes sense because we see how life works. Good people keep their jobs and bad people get fired. Good people live free and bad people go to jail. Good kids go to recess and bad kids go to detention. And somehow we just think that it's the exact same way with God. Good people go to heaven and bad people go to hell. But if that's true, there's a problem with that. Because we go, well, well where's the line? Is God like keeping score in heaven? Is there like a scale? And every time I do something good, a, a piece goes on the good side. And when I do something bad and, and whatever it weighs out at the end, then that's where I end up. And then it goes farther like, well, well, how many good things do I have to do? Like a thousand or 5,000? Like how many times should I feed the homeless? Or how many times do I forgive someone? Or how much money do I need to give? It, how much is enough on the good side where I can go to heaven? And then the problem is once you get to heaven and you're like, well, God says, I'm sorry, you're one deed short. You're like, what? One deed short? Well, that's not fair. I get to spend eternity in hell because I was one deed short. Like that seems really harsh. Like, can you get to heaven and then barter with God? Do you see where we're going with this? Because it's, it's that kind of thinking that, that gets people confused and frustrated just with life because I want to know without a doubt where I'm going to go when I die. I want to know that. And with a scale system, you never know. You never know until you die. And to me, that has to be the most frightening, horrible way to live. So we had dinner one night uh, many years ago with a Catholic priest, and I asked him this hypothetical question. I said, all right, I said, let's say you leave dinner and you go out and you do some big sin. And I said, if you died right after you did the sin, would you go to heaven? And you know what he said? He said, I don't, I don't know. He had no assurance of his salvation whatsoever. And I felt so sad for him because I said, the Bible tells us that we can know for sure. 1 John 5, 13 says, I've written these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of God so that you may know that you have eternal life. See, the Bible doesn't tell us there's a scale system. The Bible tells us there's one way to know absolutely for sure that you're going to heaven. And it's not by doing good things. It's not by, by, by spending time doing good works. It's not working hard. It's not joining a church. It's not by being religious. It's not by giving a lot of money. And it's not by just being a good person. The Bible never says that. The Bible says the only way that you can get to heaven is through Jesus. John 14, 6 says this. Jesus said, I am the way and I am the truth and I am the life and no one comes to the Father except through me. Jesus is the way, not one of many ways. Acts 4.11 says, This Jesus is the stone rejected by you builders, which has become the cornerstone. There is salvation in no one else. For there is no other name under heaven given to people, and we must be saved by it. That's it. By Jesus alone. Now the problem is, is that uh, that doesn't bode well in the day and age that we're living. That sounds way too exclusive. This little group of Jesus followers. It doesn't seem inclusive enough, like we need to include everyone. And it actually doesn't even seem fair. But here's the deal, God created the heavens and the earth. And God created people, you and me. And God has every right, because he did those things, to tell us how to get to heaven. And here's the deal, he didn't choose the be a good person pathway. He chose the Jesus alone pathway. And, and there's a reason why Jesus is the only way. And it's because of something that happened all the way back in the beginning in Genesis. All the way back in the Garden of Eden, God creates this beautiful place where Adam and Eve could live. No pain, no suffering, no sex slave trafficking, no abuse, no drugs. And, and all God asked of them was just, you have this whole garden, just don't eat of one tree. They had free reign over everything. And this was the, the moment that they decided that they were either going to obey God 
and follow God or, or follow their own selves. And what happened is they followed their own selves. Because Adam and Eve had a rebellious heart just like you and I have. And we know that. When someone tells us not to do something, we just want to do it anyway. I laugh every time I see a wet paint, don't touch sign, I have to touch it. I, why? I, I don't know. Because it tells me I can't and I shouldn't, but I want to do it anyway. We see this one. God created sex, but he created it in the, confound, the confines of, of marriage between a, a man and a woman. But of course, we don't want to listen. We don't want to get married. We want to just go have sex with whoever we want to. The Bible says, don't get drunk. It's going to hurt you. If you go out and, and you get drunk and drive, you're going to kill a family of five. But of course, we don't want to listen to God. See, we're just like Adam and Eve. But, and the reason why is because we have a sinful heart. That's just what we have. So in the garden, a s snake slithered in. Try saying that a few times. Snake slithered in. Um, and that was, of course, Satan. And he had a message for Eve. And his message was this. Hey, Eve, God's holding out on you. He knows if you eat off that tree, you know, you're going to be just like him. Hey, Eve, God's not really on your side. He doesn't really want you to be happy. So she has a choice to listen to God and obey him or listen to Satan and disobey God. And when she decided to listen to Satan, we see the effects of that in Romans 5.12. Therefore, just as sin entered the world through one man and death through sin, in this way death spread to all men because all sinned. We see it in Romans 3.23, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. So there's a problem with this thought of saying, well, well, I'm a good person. Because the Bible says all, all are not good people. All have sinned. Sin is what separates you from God. You may have sinned only one time in your life, but that sin separated you from God. And it doesn't matter how nice or good of a person you are. The moment you sinned, where you got jealous or angry, you told that little white lie, you are now considered not a good person. You're considered a sinner and a sinner that's separated from God. Isaiah 59 two says this, but your iniquities have built barriers between you and your God and your sins have made him hide his face from you so that he does not listen. But God offers us this remedy and it has nothing to do with being a good person. It's all about accepting a gift. Romans 6.23 says, for the wages of sin is death. You and I, we're, born, we're, we're, we're sentenced to die from the moment we're, we're born. But the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. John 3.36 says this, the one who believes in the Son has eternal life, but the one who refuses to believe in the Son will not see life. Instead, the wrath of God remains on him. So that's why being a good person will not get you to heaven. Because as good as you think you are, one sin has separated you from God. And that one sin puts you in the sinner category. And your only hope to ever get to heaven is to place your faith and trust in Jesus alone. Because he was crucified on a cross and all of your sins were placed on him and he paid for them. So no matter how good you think you are, the Bible makes it clear that your goodness will not get you to heaven. Which is why today you need to accept the gift that Jesus has offered. And if you don't even know how to do that, I'm going to put a link at the bottom today that shows you how to become a Christian. We named it, I want to be a Christian. So what do I do? Hopefully that helps you. Have a nice day.